CNC wood carving is sign. Welcome to episode five of CNC Beginner to Pro. Now, if you have never made a sign in uh, V-Carve, that is actually a lot of fun. Now, why is this fun? Because you can customize those signs. They can say anything and you could put anything on them and then make them unique to whoever this is for. So like when you make a gift or something like that. And I can tell you that whoever is receiving uh, a sign from you will always be like, oh wow, this is so nice. So these are super fun to make and I have several tips for you today, so let's get started. So this board I've carved from MDF. Now right up front I like to tell you that I'm not a big fan of making signs out of MDF and that has mainly to do with the painting. Um, the surface texture and just dealing with the surface, it absorbs so much paint and then the carving, if you want to color the carving, that's always a little bit more difficult too because it just looks different, the texture is different um, than the rest of the material. Anyways, a 60 degree V-bit is going to be your best friend when you start out. So uh, there are different types of bits, I'll come back to that in a moment. This here I first painted and then selected the font um, and then carved it as a V-carve using the Vectric V-carve software. So I think you can do that in V-carve desktop and also in V-carve Pro. So depending on your font, you might have some really sharp edges and corners on there. And the interesting thing is that in V-carving, the tapered bit will enter and whenever it comes to a corner, it starts to come up and make that really sharp point, that really sharp end point, something that a regular end mill cannot do. That gives a really nice effect and a really nice sharp crisp texture um, or text. And um, coming to the text, by the way, the text itself that you find in VCarve is not from VCarve. So it's not a content of VCarve. It's actually a content of your operating system. So if you don't have a whole lot of funds, that's because Microsoft Windows, if that's what you run, does not have those fonts installed. So you need to go ahead and install um, optional or additional fonts to your system. So I'd like to interrupt you for a sec. Please leave me a like if you get some value out of this. YouTube puts all my content into a black hole and nobody's gonna see it. And that is just frustrating for me. So if you find value, leave me a like, please. Thank you. Next is the surface of the material. Your board cannot be bowed at all because if it would be bowed like this, then you can see the router bit would always go with the same depth and the width of the letters would change. So it's good to make, uh, it's a good practice to make sure that your material is dead flat and if it's not, go ahead and surface it right on your machine. So in my training, I always like to follow the three M's, men, machine and material. The, the man portion is basically your knowledge and I hope I can build that up today. And the machine portion will be the tools you're gonna to need and that will be the carving bits. So my go-to bit is a 60 degree V-bit that I have right here. And it has a three quarter inch diameter and a half inch shank and it has a replaceable blade. So it has an insert, a carbide insert. Uh, I love this. If you can only buy one, then I would recommend that you get this one right here. Now there are different degrees. So this is 60, like I said, but on the other hand here, this one right here would be a white side um, and it's a 90 degree. So the 90 degree will make just a wider letter immediately and will not go as deep into the material. So then right here, this one, this one is amazing. Um, it's very, very delicate. I use it for very fine font whenever I um, do something in acrylic material. So these break easy, the tip breaks off easy. It's almost like it comes to a surgical point. And then of course we have this guy right here, which is a compression bit or a down cut bit, would be even better. And has zero degrees, so it's this flat, but once the letters get bigger, we don't necessarily have to have those sharp corners anymore. Or if you make uh, raised letters, I'm gonna talk about those in a moment, then these will work as well. And you can have that in an eighth inch or quarter inch diameter, depending on how much material you wanna remove. Next, I'd like to show you this welcome sign I made. So it's rather large and it doesn't fit in the image right now, but, um, 
it is simply made of cedar picket fence. So I think I bought these on sale like for three bucks each, glued them together and then painted them. Um, it probably will be good to seal both sides, otherwise it's gonna bow. But um, for the painting, I like to give you a tip. Whenever you do a project, first apply a seal coat. Uh, some type of clear material. It could be a lacquer, it uh, could be a water-based material that you apply by brush. I love shellac out of a can because it dries fast. And the reason why you want to do that is that the paint will lay on top of your board and it will not soak in. That prevents it from bleeding into the letters and it will also be easier to sand your project later on. Like if I want this in wood color and this in the color that you paint, then I want to send this back off and it's much, much easier when you have the shellac coat first or a seal coat first. So the tool I used for this is an eighth inch compression bit. If you have an eighth of an inch down cut bit, I think that would even be better. Once the letters get big enough that they open up, so all of the radii, radii, I think it's plural, all the radii will um, be big enough that you can just use a regular end mill. You don't have to have a V-bit on those larger signs. So obviously this sign doesn't fit onto my machine uh, in the y-axis, so the lengthwise, but uh, that's not a problem. Um, in VCarve you can use the tile manager and that is actually really, really simple to use. You just click the axis that you need, in my case Y, and then you tell it the amount you want to move forward and um, VCarve will then just cut the um, tool pass off in that section. So what you want to do is just make sure that you end up between two letters and not within a letter. So I think for this one here I chose 700 millimeters and um, the tool pass then will be automatically generated. Um, it's a nice feature to let you make much much larger projects actually than the size of your machine. So the next type of sign has raised letters and those are probably the most difficult signs to make. So instead of giving you the perfect sign, um, I think I incorporated as many uh, mistakes that you can make as a beginner so we can go through those. So number one, I painted everything in black and I did also do my seal code. And of course I couldn't wait, so I put it onto the machine and started carving and the paint was still slightly tacky. And what will happen is that the dust actually from the machining will start to adhere. And this is black and this is light colored wood. So that dust is never gonna come back out of those pores. It is in there and it will pretty much ruin your project. Number two is, this is Baltic birch plywood and it was really dead flat. But I'll have to remove a lot of pocket right here. So this is not a V-carve um, toolpath, it's actually just a pocket toolpath where I have selected the outside perimeter and then the letters and I said okay carve away this pocket right here. And there's a lot of material to take away so I used a quarter inch bit just to, as a clearance bit, to remove the material. All right, that's a compression bit. What do we know from a compression bit from the last video? Well, we have to go at least a quarter inch deep. So this is 12 millimeter material right here. That means that we're gonna carve away more than half of the material. So yes, the material was flat when I put it on the machine, but during machining, it started to bow. And I like to show you the effect uh, that that will have um, on your sign. There's nothing wrong with your machine or with the tool or anything you did, but what you will find in your project, I'm not sure if I can get it to focus here. Um, you see those lines right here? Those lines will appear because the material at a later stage will start to bow up. So you will go deeper into the material and or into the pocket and um, the floor finish is not gonna look good. So number three is that I used a clearance tool, the quarter inch, but then I used a finishing tool and that is an eighth of an inch, just to get in all of the nooks and crannies. And that is fine, but the eighth of an inch tool now needs to have a really deep path. And you remember the down cut bit cannot relieve the material or the chips out. 
and that actually in that depth will not work very well. You're gonna have things start to smoke. So I really cannot recommend that. So again, the pocket is too deep. Also for the finishing tool. And then last but not least, you will see that this is messed up in the letters. So often when you do raised letters, it uh, is really nice to make a chamfering pass on the outside of that. And there's a little bit of a quirks in, uh, in V-Carve. So what it will do is that it will show you the simulation correctly, but actually your product will come out different or the letters will come out different. And you can see, um, so um, which one did I carve? Oh yeah, here's this O right here. So that O is carved and there's hardly anything left. And then these here, there, there's nothing left. I mean, I just ruined the whole project. And the way that works is that for the chamfer, you have to set a cut depth. And I set the cut depth too deep and my V-bit went in there and it just ruined everything. And that is the last step. So basically right when your project is finished, the last tool pass, you ruin everything. So um, the raised letters are a bit more difficult to do. So in the beginning I showed you this v carve font, but you can actually reverse it as well. <laughs> Not only the sign, but also the coloring. So here I have sprayed the board to cover the letters and then sand that back off. And the way I did that is that I used the same font as this, same font, highlighted the font, but then used the 2D profile toolpath. And in that you have to give it a cut depth. So the cut depth here is one millimeter. And I used a 60 degree V bit. And that will make a nice outline um, of your text. Now here I have a pro tip for you. You will notice that when you look at it, that this is lighter in color and this is darker in color because the depth is one millimeter in either case, but here the font is smaller. So if you have smaller font, use less cut depth. And if you have larger font, then make your cut depth a little bit bigger. Okay. So that was this for that was it for for today's video. I hope that you got something out of this and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Bye.